What's up, guys? Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about Digital Signal Processor because I feel like it is the most, uh, the biggest improvement that we've made in the car audio community uh, in a very long time. And the abilities that it, it lends to the installer and the enthusiast, such as ourselves, uh, are bar none the biggest upgrade we've ever had in the past you know uh back in the day in the 70s and 80s uh 90s and uh, you know we had uh equalizer if you were lucky your stereo had one it probably had three bands maybe five bands you could eq the whole radio the whole sound and uh you could go to the aftermarket systems and Back in the day, you could buy something that looked a little bit like this. Uh, this is actually a modern-ish version, but they all looked similar. You had your, you know, your own off button, and you had a bunch of equalizing ability, front to back fader, and a level control. And this would let you affect the overall sound of the entire system. What a DSP does, just in the equalization part, is it gives you one of these for each individual channel. And instead of seven bands, it has most of the time 30 bands or, you know, more. And instead of the set value for each band, it has, you can, you can change what frequency you're actually adjusting infinitely. So you can move that frequency around on the spectrum you can create a, a a a boost at 10 hertz or at 20 hertz or at 22 hertz and and you could change uh so you could set that that point to wherever you want and then you could change the slope so however much of the frequencies beside it was being affected uh you could change the width of that that affected area that that controller would affect and it's, I mean, like, it's so big of a deal. Uh, and until you get into, until you get into the, uh, the DSP markets, you really don't understand exactly what you're gaining from that. There's no, normally you're running from your stereo into an amplifier like this one. This is a, a, a Diamond 4-channel, uh, which is uh, fully functional. It's a 400-watt 4-channel, 100 watts per channel. And you've got, on the back back here, you've got front and rear and pre-outs. So what happens is you run your front left and right, your rear left and right into this amplifier, and then you can run your speakers out of the amplifier front front and rear speakers and then of course your output your out your pre out will allow you to run it out into a say a subwoofer amplifier and then you can power a whole system but you've only got the controls in this amplifier to allow you to manipulate the sound and although this is a really nice one and it has a lot of good flexibility uh being able to use uh, uh first something like this to allow you to do more customization is good but whenever you open up a, a, a digital signal processor and add that to the system the changes are almost infinite you can you could tether the sound in such a way that it changes the entire game. Of course, that's only the equalization. There's a whole lot more when it comes to uh, what a digital signal processor can do. Then you have time alignment. Time alignment works like this. If you've got a, uh, you've got a speaker here and a speaker over here, like several feet away and you got one that's really close whenever you're listening to the music coming through those two speakers you're going to be able to your brain is going to be able to tell you 
that this sound source is close and this one is far away. And uh, the way it does that is a couple of ways. One is the amount of time it takes for the signal to get from the speaker to your ear is shorter here than it is over here. With time alignment allows you to tell the speaker over here, well, to tell this speaker, the close one, to play later. So it will wait until the signal from this one over here is the same spot, and then both of them will reach your ear at the same time. This tricks your brain into thinking that the speakers are an equal distance apart. In a car, that's a big deal because nothing is equal distance apart in a car. The environment in an automobile is the worst possible environment for a stereo imaging. So it requires the most work to make it sound good. Uh, and of course, this works for every speaker in the car. If if all the speakers in the car sound gets to your ear equally, then you sound it sounds a bit like you're wearing a huge set of awesome headphones because the sound is all where it should be. And that's the ideal scenario. Um, and time alignment allows you to do that. And that's a big deal when it comes to imaging, placing things where you want them to be in your virtual space. Uh, just covering some of the details of what a DSP can do. So you've got your, your 30 band parametric EQ, which is the ability to equalize it in any way, every way you can possibly think of. You've got your time alignment, You've got your crossover set points. So again, like I was saying, on uh, this amplifier, this is a four channel amplifier, typical of what someone who spends a little bit of money and gets a nice piece of equipment is gonna have for their car. And here you've got front and rear cutoff points. So you got front and rear gain here, and you got your crossover points here, low pass and high pass and full range, and the frequency that they affect. Right, so you think, well, why do I need that? Well, I could take this four channel amp and set it up in such a way that it'll work just fine. But I could actually, with a DSP, I could have something crossing over at a different point here than over here. And, uh, for instance, I might have the frequency cut at, say, 80 hertz over here on the bottom end and 110 hertz over here on the bottom end, you know, because of different way sounds work in that uneven, awkward shape thing that I'm putting speakers into. Uh, being able to set that also allows me to make these changes quickly and easily. So if I'm, uh, if I'm testing a different tune, I can change my cutoff, my frequency cutoff points just quickly on an app and boom, I can change it. I can change all these settings and I have this amp buried in the back back there somewhere. It may be back there under the seat or in, or in the, you know, in the floor or behind some panel. Uh, going back there and making changes is pretty tough. Whereas I can do it from the driver's seat, go up, yep, I don't like that, and change it right back. I never have to get up and go dig that out. I can do it right there on my phone. That's cool. Um, then you got, so you got your frequency cutoff points. You got your uh, EQ, time alignment. And of course, you can, like I said, you can equalize all the channels individually. <clears throat> the amount of things that you can do with a digital signal processor are more or less limited by your imagination because you've got uh, all pass filters, which is a whole nother deep level of, of uh, sound manipulation uh, to be able to create uh, sound staging. So whenever you're, you're building a sound stage, sometimes you'll have a tone that you won't get be able to get where you want it. And, and, and you guys that have ever worked with a DSP, this is kind of a more advanced. Th actually, it's, it's quite a bit more advanced. Uh, but if you're, if you're centering up different frequencies and you're getting them into the sound stage where you want them, 
And let's say you got a 500 hertz frequency that keeps wanting to wander over here and you can't make it get where it's supposed to be. You can, on that particular, or on the channel it's affected, you can create an all pass filter and you can say at 500 hertz or at 475 hertz, flip phase, flip to the other, the other opposite phase, go 90, 90 degrees out or 180 degrees out a phase and then at 525 hertz go back into phase and that allows you to to flip that phase and move that frequency over and usually when you're having trouble moving the frequency to get it where you want it, it's because the sine wave doesn't line up in your application and, and you've got one channel is peaking where another one's peaking and then that's moving that picture over here where it doesn't belong. And being able to do the all-pass filter and flip one of those out of phase at that frequency allows you to move that image to where you're trying to put it at. Uh, like I said, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, having a digital signal processor in your system just gives the flexibility to do so many things. Uh, mine has a Bluetooth, so I can connect to it with Bluetooth and work on it with Bluetooth. And I can also connect to it and stream music over it with Bluetooth. You can totally eliminate your stereo completely, connect your, your device straight to your DSP if you want to run it that way. Uh, mine also has a volume control and a, uh, a subwoofer control. So right up front, so I can, I can stream straight off my phone to my DSP and not even use any of the factory stereo system or any of the other stuff. Just go straight to that, into the amplifiers. It's like having a big giant Bluetooth speaker in your car. You skip everything else and you play it right off your phone with the volume control. <laughs> like I said, it, there's no end to what you can do. So when I, when I say building a system, start with your amplifiers and uh, your digital signal processor because it's going to give you all the tools you need to solve any problem that you're going to run into and also to create the flexibility and uh, uh, to, to, to make everything sound like it's supposed to sound and to manipulate that, change it. If you wanted to go back through and add another amplifier or add more speakers or add more of this or that or change that, that key piece, that DSP will give you that foundation to make those changes and in and out without any major work. You, you, you add them to the DSP and then you can control them from there. You can run your channels wide open, you know, no, no crossovers, whatever on your amplifier. And let your DSP handle all of that. And you can quickly, consistently make changes. You can do a whole tune and save it as one thing. And then you can pick a whole other tune for a whole different thing. And you can flip back and forth. So you could have one tune for riding around and another tune for DB drags. Or you could have a tune for, uh, for, for the SQ guys for competition and another tune for daily driving or a tune for uh, a driver's seat tune and a, and a tune for the center. So you get the whole car gets more of a stereo image. Like it is, and then you can save all these. You can have all these different tunes and you just push a button and change between them. Without a DSP, it literally requires you to completely redo your system every time. Like get out the screwdrivers and all that and go and go to work. And then you're just going to be guessing at exactly where you want everything. Having the ability to do it from an app that's huge you know it's a tinkerer's paradise you'll find yourself sitting in the driveway you know seven eight o'clock in the evening the sun's gone down and you're just chilling listening to your radio making tweaks playing some of your favorite music and going oh man this is awesome zoning out you know uh and uh yeah when, when you when you experience that that's that's the magic right there, baby. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you like my new setup. And uh, I just wanted to pitch out a video talking about digital signal processor a little bit. And uh, let you guys know what's up with that. And hopefully, we'll keep the content rolling. And 
my brain just turned completely off, so I'm lost. <laughs> Peace, guys.